All right, here we are, Union to Tuple. So Union to Tuple is funny. If you've seen all the challenges by now, you might be asking, is there any other combination of we've done Tuple to Union, we've done like intersection to Union, Union to intersection, Tuple to... In I mean, there's like everything. This one is a little harder. It's in the hard difficulty set. Um, instead of just, uh, there's a lot to talk through. I always like to just show the challenges. So hopefully we can make sense of it by seeing the actual, uh, the, the actual different tests that we have here. So the first one, uh, they give us this little helper type. I left it in here because it's used for the challenges. Uh, but all the same, we're going to we're gonna grab, uh, we have as an input this union, and we're going to turn it into a tuple. And you might be screaming inside because unions are unordered structures and tuples are ordered structures. So you might be wondering, like, how is that going to, how's that going to work? Uh, we'll talk about that, and I'll I'll show you. Uh, I guess we'll 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 talk through those cases. I'd say, but do you? Ha I guess this isn't something that you could really solve without ha knowing how it works. Have you ever seen somebody try to turn a union into a tuple before? Uh, I've seen I've seen functions like the names of types that do that, but I've never actually looked at how they're done. How they work? To my okay, recollection. Okay. So yeah. So I, I don't think, know something with functions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the stupidity. best place is to just show. Uh, some examples. So let me grab, let me grab one um, union to tuple. Oh, and there's like a little explainer. Oh yeah, I did a lot of prep work from this one. Okay, this is an interesting topic, and it is it is more considerably more difficult than the other combinations of these structures we've seen in the past. So starting from line seventy two here, this is the entry point of our. Uh, you could think of it as our uh, like entry point to the function. We added a temporary parameter uh, here, temporary storage for last, we're calling it. And we have this helper that we created called last and union. Now, last and union takes in u, so that's really where the magic is going to happen. This, this first part here is just a never check. Never is uh, a fun fact about never that, well, you probably know this, Josh, like the never is like the empty set. Yeah, it is something that must theoretically exist in TypeScript, but should never be reached, and thus is super useful for all these shenanigans. Yes, totally. So never is like the empty union. So like we could get to this case at the. So this is like the base case of our recursion is like when we're all out of values, then we'll just have nothing back here, which means that uh, this is the recursion. So it means that it'll it'll just have an array there, which will go down to nothing, and then we're done. So yeah, that's how that's how it all ends. But we have union to tuple, and we're excluding. So exclude is another challenge we've done, but it's a built-in type. We're excluding you. Uh, we're excluding from from you all values that are assignable to last. So last is still in this case uh, a union, uh, but it's the last thing in the union. So where's the magic happen? Okay, <laughs> so. Uh, we have to first talk about union to intersection. Does this look familiar? This is, I think we we just had this in a previous challenge, like literally this exact thing. Oh yeah, this old friend. This old friend. Functions. So, so basically we're, we're taking this function, t extends t is a way of forcing the distributivity to work. And then we're distributing that into the arguments of a function. We don't care what the function returns. This is like very arbitrary value. Could be anything here. Um, could be, doesn't matter. So it could be unknown as well. It's probably more clear. And uh, never is never going to be hit because we have a value. So that's just what we need to, some like TypeScript ceremony we have to get through to get to distribute. And then we're going to grab out i. And then we have a union, uh, I'm sorry, an intersection from that union. Once we have that intersection, we can do the same dance again and grab the last, the last one in that union by trying to find something from that function intersection that, uh, I feel like I'm not explaining this well, but we're doing it twice and grabbing out a value with u from that intersection that we will then infer as the last element in the union. So if we do last in union, um, how, how, is this making any sense at all? 
It is, yeah. I think it would be helpful to look through it, but it makes sense to me. Union to intersection is just converting it from a union to an intersection, which doesn't get us to the format we need, but it gets us to one where now that it's at an intersection, we can grab out the last thing. And it's last because that's just the order that TypeScript checks things or, or gives things back to us in. Exactly. And if you're a TypeScript power user, you may know that the order of unions in TypeScript is deterministic, but not stable from release to release. So it does change from time to time across TypeScript releases. And I don't know the team, I'm not trying to throw shade on the team, but the team doesn't seem to know why it changes. Like sometimes it'll change and they'll be like, someone will file a bug and they'll be like, I don't know, something happened, I guess. Um, it's a big problem. Well, There's this thing that... Hmm? I can, I can I can shed some light on that. I'm not please, a member please. of the team, to be clear. But uh, it's be it is it is deterministic because it is enforced by well tests for any current any behavior that actually matters, like to end users, not to ridiculous shenanigans like us. Mm -hmm. But uh, the the logic that goes into this stuff it can be surprisingly complex and can have uh, edge cases. TypeScript does a lot of caching internally, so. Uh, it just so happens that a change in the logic, say an optimization in which types it gets to in which order, makes that cache have a different order, which means that sometimes things can be, you know, going in there in a cache in an unexpectedly new or old way. Oh. So it is deterministic within each release. Like it, the right. logic doesn't have a math.random in it. It'll happen the same thing every time. But the logic itself is not something that the TypeScript compiler guarantees. Because if they wanted to guarantee that, they would then have to make sure that the caching behavior internally and other random things is the same release to release, which would stop them from being able to iterate on them as nicely. So it's good for us that it is not uh, guaranteed release to release, but still deterministic within a release. Perfect. That's really interesting stuff. I didn't know any of that about the, the caching internally, so it's, it's super interesting to hear. I, I know that it comes up because I've seen there's this syntax that's used. I think it's something like this. Maybe it uses the two slash, but uh, there's this syntax in the TypeScript code base. And you know, if you can imagine, if you put a, it's the because of the way the syntax works, it's in the comment system, so you can't really refactor it. And if you have a union anywhere in any of these, it, like all you might upgrade TypeScript and a bunch of your tests will break. And the solution to breaking them is to just go like fiddle with the order of the unions to make it not break anymore, which is like a super bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. So this person, uh, this is another, per someone asked a question about this and, uh, and they said, so function arguments are in contravariant positions. So when functions intersect, arguments do not intersect, but are united. So this intersection of functions forms an overload, a function that takes either one or two as its first argument, uh, which is, which is why E is two, not never or one. So E is this example up here. Um, Oh, sorry, E is this example down here on 101 to 105. And I think this is a good explanation. Uh, if that was too fast for you, just pause the screen and read it again. But, you know, functions can can be given uh, kind of otherwise uninter like non-intersecting. If, if I just make a type, okay, let me just say it this way, type X or whatever, some, some type equals string and, and uh, number, for example. In every other case in TypeScript, this is equal to never. But for functions, if I have a, you know, uh, a string one or whatever, and B number, this is totally legit. These are two different functions. Uh, you can either pass in, and then we could say A here. I think it wants me to put parentheses. Yeah. So... This is totally fine, and it's not never. You can take this function. I can make a make a function like. Uh, uh, now I have to retype that thing. Okay, <laughs> uh, a. And if I hover over a here, uh, what's going on here? Uh, a return string. What I do, Josh? What is the error message it's giving? Um, it's saying one is not assignable to number one. A, one and a. Oh, oh! I have to put parentheses around this. Okay, okay. About That's off both of them. Yeah. Syntax kerfuffle. But if I hover over a, we see that a is string or number. Yeah. Function overloads are wacky. It is it's a wacky situation because 
uh, and this is this is what's powering so many of these shenanigans you're doing. Yeah, that functions and TypeScript can be added together. That's not only a, a a fun thing to do; it's an important thing because function overloads are a real thing. If function overloads didn't exist in TypeScript, the type system would be much simpler for functions. But then you wouldn't have these union to intersection shenanigans possible. Or yep. we'd have to find some even worse way of doing things, which I couldn't yep. even imagine. So I'm, I'm not going to talk through it, but I'll put it on the screen here. And you know, if you want to see it, pause. Um, someone took the time to write, like, kind of thought, like, step by step, going through all of the functions that we just saw above, step by step, how it resolves things and how it works through. And I think this is a really cool explanation, and I couldn't help but uh, but include it. And then um, I think we have one more. Oh no, two more little alternatives. So this next one is by Team Chong, uh, the famous. Let's see, and then no, maybe we can actually just remove some of this stuff up here because we got a we got a lot of stuff we built up. There's a lot to talk about in this one. So this is a never check. Makes sense. Uh, they're get, getting the last in union. So this is this is basically uh, basically the same. Um, this infers an optimization. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, but you can grab the value out instead of nesting again. And they show in this case, I wanted to bring this one on screen because it shows how to grab, uh, or like what the steps are. So it's expanding it out to a union of different functions, then it's intersecting them together, um, and then it's using that same syntax. So this is, I'm not, you know, Tell me, Josh, if something jumps out to you. This is very similar to what we've already seen, but I just kind of wanted to show this one because I thought it was cool how it uh, used generic parameters to store the different values. and uh, But also, it he explained kind of what it is piece by piece. Yeah, I like this one's explanations more. I, it's too advanced and too quick for me to have a preference on the actual okay. <laughs> logic, but the, the explanations are good, and I'm a sucker for someone using generic type parameters as a way to create variables in the type system. That's funny. Okay, most people hate I mean, that. That's, so. that's, that's just a good way of doing things. Uh, okay, all right. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, I, I've come, I'm a little worried after spending all of this time doing this stuff. Like, I'm much more uh, acclimated to, to these crazy things in TypeScript, and they don't strike me as bizarre anymore. And maybe that's now, now am I out of touch? You know, <laughs> you are out of touch. We both are. You probably. and I, we probably are. We'll I do it. I do a TypeScript workshop and I, I try to teach people key of, and that's like mind blowing and cool. And then I'm thinking, well, we haven't even touched, you know, conditional maps and, <laughs> and, and furs and stuff. What are you talking about? This <sighs> boring. Yeah. We're out of touch. Uh, this is the last. This is the last one. Um, it's really cool because it's so short, Oof. and there's not so Oof. much to it. That's it's so actually, clean. It's got all the same moving pieces, um, but it's really condensed down to like I, I. I looked for like I was trying to think: is there any way to refactor this down more? And I don't see one. It's using every helper and every kind of like approach that can be used to make this condensed. And here it is. Um, union function, and the names are pretty good, union to function intersection. So I think you could make a good guess about what that even is. Um, and then we're inferring uh, the return. In this case, it's using return types, I guess. That's kind of weird. Um, but all the same. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Because it's it's this happens to be the, the return of this thing. OK, fair enough. But yeah, what do you? How do you like this one? Do you think this is better than the ones before that were more expanded, or what do you like? Ooh, I don't know. If we're talking about lines of code, it's certainly better, but <laughs> it's too it's too quick and soon for me to make a judgment on, you know, sure. quality by most other metrics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But gosh darn, is this so much less code? Wow, that's it's really impressive. Uh, props to whoever wrote this. I think there were actually a few people. Um, I try really hard to to credit someone if I find, but if I find like uh, like three or four people that submit the same answer, um, sure they could have looked at somebody else's answer and posted it. But I'm trying to take it on good faith that multiple people came up with the same solution, and so I don't sure. credit it. So this one, I think a few people found, but I don't know. Well, uh, props to all of them. This is great. It's great stuff for sure. I mean, it, yeah. it makes sense. That's one of the benefits of having not as much code. Like you can read through it all and see it all on the screen and understand it together. You need to function insertion or intersection, takes a T, mm -hmm. distributes it into function overloads, and then adds together the arguments with the infer R. 
By the way, not not a huge fan of single character names. It should it should be in for arg instead of r or something like that for a little clarity. I don't know, but yeah. it is the return of the of the union. So yeah, okay. I uh, I am right there with you. I'm gonna do a video after all the challenges are over, like with some of the things that I've learned, and one of them is gonna be that um, it is really hard to work with this stuff when they're single letter variable names. I don't love it. In this case, I go out of my way to make all of the challenges and all the stuff fit in 60 characters so that it's easy to read mm -hmm. on a phone. Um, because I want people to be able to consume this kind of content on a phone. I think that's important to me. But if it wasn't for that, I would definitely never use T or any of these other things. Uh, R, it's like, it's it's too much. There's too many T's. Like, which T is the, you know, which, where, what? Yeah. It's a lot. So. Cool. Awesome. I agree. Let's keep trucking. <laughs> <laughs>